Hi everyone, Shalise here. I'm the archivist for the Huntsville-Madison County Public Library System. And today I'm going to tell you about some of the spooky items that we have in the archives. So my first spooky item is this book. Um, you may be familiar with this book. It's kind of classic. 13 Alabama Ghosts and Jeffrey. And the way the story goes is uh, Catherine Tucker Wintem is the author. Uh, she's a pretty famous Alabama author and storyteller. And her house was haunted. Um, so that inspired this series of books. Uh, and it was haunted by a ghost named Jeffrey. Uh, Jeffrey would um, walk through the house so they could hear footsteps or unexplainable noises. And one of his uh, more successful actions was he, they were, so they were sitting in the family room and they heard this loud noise and they went to check and see what happened and they couldn't get the door open to the room where the noise came from because Jeffrey had moved a piece of furniture in front of the door. So, um, my, my elementary school librarian, Miss Witten, uh, read this book to us a lot. And I, it's like the only, I know she read other books, but this is the only one I remember her reading. Um, so I have very fond memories of these books. And I, I kind of blame Miss Witten for my uh, love of all things spooky. She's at least partially to blame. But anyway, so I uh, saw this book in our rare books collection and I grabbed it off the shelf and I opened it up and saw that it is signed by Jeffrey. Signed by a ghost. <laughs> so my next spooky item is also, it's another book. It's called X plus Y equals Z, or The Sleeping Preacher. And this book is the story of Reverend Sanders. He was a Cumberland Presbyterian preacher in Mooresville, so not far from here. And uh, Reverend Sanders, so this is Reverend Sanders here. He was born in 1869, or I'm sorry, he was 38 in 1869. This is, that's the time this photograph was taken in 1869. So that kind of gives you a time frame for when Reverend Sanders was doing his thing. Um, and you can see that he's a very tortured looking man and you're gonna find out why. Um, so poor Reverend Sanders would go into these uh, like fits and he would have seizures and terrible headaches. Um, and occasionally his skull would split open I have so many questions, uh, but one eyewitness said his skull separated nearly wide enough to bury my little finger in. <gasps> um, so when, uh, when Reverend Sanders would have these fits, he would go into a trance. And when he was in the trance, another personality would come out. And the personality's name was X plus Y equals Z. And uh, X, as people called him, could predict the future. So he predicted a number of incidents um, that happened, uh, fires, um, he predicted some people's deaths. Uh, he also predicted that a woman in Decatur would get struck by lightning, and then she did. Uh, so that is the story of the sleeping preacher. I have told you only a small fraction of this amazing story. So if you want to come by uh, the special collections department, we'll grab a copy and you can start reading and learn a little bit more about the sleeping preacher. My next spooky item is a painting by local artist Anne Bradshaw Clopton, and she had a really unusual style of painting. She would collect spider webs and she would paint on the spider web. Um, so we actually have an Anne Bradshaw Clopton spider web painting that I'm going to show you and I'm going to put it back because it is very fragile. Um, but here's the painting. So it kind of, when I first look at this painting, I thought, oh, that's painted directly on the glass. There is no way that it's on the spider webs. But if you look closely, you can see that she has painted directly on the spider web um, that she's caught between some mat board and the glass is just protecting it. So this is actually um, a picture of the big spring. Uh, it was painted, in, or she donated it to the library in 1946. So this painting is at least 74 years old. Uh, and now I'm going to put it back. 
because who knew a spiderweb painting could last that long? That's amazing to me. Um, but you can find Anne lurking around in Huntsville's uh, basements and attics, torturing spiders, uh, collecting spider webs. I personally would have given up on this hobby like the first time I ran into a spider. Um, so I'm very impressed with her perseverance. Um, but she was known nationally, nationally for her style of painting. So my next item, no spooky uh, story would be complete without these guys. Um, these are Nora Wellings dolls. And our archive actually has quite a lot of spooky dolls. I don't know why. I mean, there, there are so many. So <laughs> I picked the spookiest dolls to show you guys today. Um, they have, I mean, I don't, I'm not really sure what it is. I think it's their menacing little faces and blood red lips, maybe. Um, but these dolls were actually, they have kind of a cool background story. So Nora Wellings was an English toy maker. Um, she became a toy maker in 1919. So that wasn't really a time when women were like as focused on getting a career. They're more focused on getting married, having kids, having a home to take care of. But she wanted to make toys. Um, so she started making toys and she actually ended up opening a factory in 1926. And um, she her dolls were known for being very high quality, and I would say these are high quality nightmare fuel. These are terrifying dolls. <laughs> um, and they were donated to the library by Annie Chase. Um, she was a Huntsvillian who, she actually served on the library board when, uh, when it was the Carnegie Library. Um, and her husband owned Chase Nurseries. Some of you might be familiar with that. Um, but the Chases love to travel, and so they picked up these two dolls, Dutch boy and girl, probably in the Netherlands, if I had to guess. Um, so, spookiest dolls in the archives. It's official. Um, the library has not quite as many spooky photographs as they do spooky dolls, or as we do spooky dolls, um, but we do have a few, so I'm gonna show them to you. Uh, so one type of creepy photo is when something is supposed to be cute or fun, but it's actually really kind of scary. Um, and the youth services department in the 70s and 80s seemed to excel at taking kind of creepy photographs. So here's one of an Easter bunny. It looks like this person has a bag on their head. I don't know. I'll let you be the judge. Uh, here is a storybook character. Uh, this, it took me a while to figure out what this creature is. Uh, this was our mascot in the 70s, and it's a turtle. Uh, <laughs> a very, I mean, if I were, if I encountered this as a child, I would run in the other direction. And here is another slightly terrifying storybook character. I mean, <laughs> those poor children. Um, and this one, so my coworkers and I have talked about this. We're not 100% sure what happened to this photograph. It is a picture of a puppet show. Um, but I think maybe it got overexposed. Um, but it looks like there is a like a glowing eyed demon in the corner of this photograph. Um, there is a there's another photograph that's perfectly normal of this scene. Um, this is the only way I could figure out what was actually going on here. It's supposed to be a puppet show. Um, but that is probably the creepiest photograph I've seen in the archives thus far. And that's it for me today. Thanks for tuning in.